There's a new book out by Christian rocker Roger Dale Martin, bass player for the 80s, 90s band Vengeance Rising, and member of the current band Reign of Glory. The book is called This Is What Happened, The Story of Christian Metal and Vengeance Rising. I've read it. We'll take a look at it here in our first book review at Tim Talks Christian Rock, coming up. Hey there, y'all, and welcome back to another episode of Tim Talks Christian Rock. Tim Risto here, host of the Creative Christians podcast, joining you once again. I hope you're doing great today, as always. Listen, Christian thrash metal band uh, Vengeance Rising has a rather storied history across its four studio albums recorded between 1987 and 1992. Much of that controversy, though, surrounds that of lead singer Roger Martinez, who reportedly went from Christianity to Satanism to atheism. And if you're looking for more about that sensational side of the man's story, look elsewhere. This book keeps its emphasis firmly on the development of the band and its music ministry, which, in my opinion, is a really good thing. As the subtitle on the cover suggests, this book provides a really interesting peek into the rise of the Christian metal scene in and around Los Angeles, California during this time, particularly in the wake of Striper's early success. It's a story angle that I've not seen any books tackle as yet, at least none that I'm aware of. And of course, it's also about how Vengeance, later becoming Vengeance Rising, got its start, the different band lineups, and then how it developed and includes anecdotal nuggets from the band's early history and Martin's personal life along the way as well. For example, Martin talks about his passion of wanting to be in a band and his early journey to getting there. There's some interesting stories along the way. He recounts being saved at a Daryl Mansfield concert at Harvest Christian Fellowship in Riverside, California on November 1st, 1984. Pretty cool. There's lots of little nuggets of stories like that along the way you really get a nice flavor of the Southern California metal music scene during this time and Christian metal's roots in that. This is definitely one of the strengths of the book. It gives readers a peek into that scene, the environment, and the unique development of Christian metal and Vengeance Rising's role in that. Let me read a little excerpt from the book that kind of illustrates this. This is chapter four, Territory, and I'll read the whole chapter because it's really short. Southern California was awesome in 1984. The economy was booming and people were nice and friendly. The city of Fontana was located about 60 miles inland from the beach and Los Angeles, the heavy metal capital of the world. And the heart of the metal scene was Hollywood. Many famous clubs like Gazzari's, the Whiskey A Go-Go, and the Rainbow Bar and Grill featured up-and-coming metal acts. The clubs were thriving and making money hand over fist. The surrounding towns were satellite scenes and venues with a territorial spirit, especially the Inland Empire. This area of Los Angeles consists of Fontana, Riverside, San Bernardino, and a few others. Emerald, his band at the time, was a top draw in the Inland Empire already. Glam was king, and you looked the part. So did Emerald, and very soon so did I. A fierce rivalry existed between all the bands in the Inland Empire, I was very surprised. Emerald shared the city of Fontana with another very popular band. They were a pentagram slash 666 type of band. Can't remember their name, but I felt a spiritual battle very early back in those days. God was grooming me for what was later to come. So that's the whole chapter. Like I said, a lot of chapters are really short, but um, that kind of flavor uh, permeates much of the book. So you really get this feel for that early, uh, you know, Christian metal scene, the metal scene in general there in California and around the L.A. area. Um, But it kind of has that flavor throughout the book, which I just find really interesting to read. Martin credits the influences of bands like Striper, Holy Soldier, Neon Cross, and many others as being significant in his musical influences and faith focus, as well as the development of Vengeance Rising, and being significant in the metal scene of the day in and around L.A. But he also makes it clear that God, God's Word, the Bible, 
his faith and the faith of his fellow Christian musicians were the reasons for any success they had. Quick little bit of background to help frame the story of this book a bit, and, and Martin goes into this in, in his book, but one of the aspects of this whole story that I found interesting was reading more directly about the role of Pastor Bob Beeman, who was known pretty widely among uh, uh, avid Christian rock fans. If you've been to a recent Immortal Fest music festival, you've probably heard Pastor Bob speak. He's kind of become legendary among avid Christian rock fans, but Beeman was foundational in starting a sanctuary, which was a church made up of largely Christian uh, you know, musicians, uh, band members, fans that formed in California back in the day in the wake of Striper's success. Described as the rock and roll refuge, the initial idea of this was to disciple people who had given their lives to Jesus at a striper show. You know, by following up, providing them with a place and space for ministry to help them grow and develop in their newfound faith. Um, in other words, not leave them hanging after they'd been saved. Um, Sanctuary and its ministry looked a lot more like, you know, and sounded like the environment that these people would be willing to step into as opposed to a more traditional church. Beeman took this ministry very seriously, uh, developed it beyond just the striper shows, and even began designing and developing bands from the members of his congregation. And, you know, developed them to help target specific audiences via Christian music ministry you know, based upon the style of music and the needs of the people uh, in the various environments and venues that they were performing. That's how Vengeance Rising really got, got its start, um, as a way to use thrash and speed metal music to minister to people who are caught up in some pretty dark beliefs and sinful lifestyles. And, and you know, hopefully point the way to, to Jesus, you know, leading them to faith through music and biblically sound lyrics. Martin even admits in the book that Vengeance Rising, you know, they did not see themselves as evangelists. Um, their faith message was largely confined to the lyrics themselves. They did strive for biblically sound lyrics, prayed before and after many shows, and developed in their faith under Pastor Bob's guidance. Otherwise, on the outside, I guess you could say, they may have just appeared to be a band performing Christian music. You know, there was no altar calls, for example, um, or spiritual chat during the shows for the most part, at least as I understand it. Um, this was not a Petra concert, in other words. Uh, but these guys also were not performing in arenas before saved people as much as they were trying to reach the lost with words of God's truth in clubs and similar darker venues and having to really kind of stand back and allow the Holy Spirit to do the work. In some cases, the venues they performed in were quite hostile. And one chapter in particular sums this up well, and I'll read another quick ep excerpt that illustrates this point. It's chapter 35, page 122 here. Um, chapter 35 is titled, My Darkest Gig. I don't remember how it happened, but somehow we got an earlier slot for a show at the Waters Club. It was an off night, like a Tuesday or Thursday. We did not promote it. We had no tickets to sell, so we had no support at all. No one praying and no one attending. Out of five bands in the lineup, we were in the third position. This was no ordinary night, and all the bands except us were deep into Satanism. I had an uneasy feeling, to say the least. The first band played and got off the stage. The second band was getting their equipment set up, and we all went backstage. None of us really felt good at all. Even though we were backstage, it was very loud because the walls were paper thin. Suddenly, the second band cranked up. I got a chill. Not an excited chill, but a sick flu-like chill. By the third song, I had become nauseous and was about to spew when I got a hold of myself and calmed down a little. It was spiritual warfare, and I felt it deep in my gut. This was spiritually dark territory. We all knew it and felt it. Second band finished up and we hit the stage. We did our thing and Martinez did not waver or back down at all. The crowd looked like they wanted to kill us and probably did. After our set, we knew that no ministry was happening that night and we just wanted to secure our gear and slip away. Normally the roadies took care of all the equipment, but tonight everyone started tearing down and helping. 
Since Martinez only carried a microphone, he was backstage catching his breath. I stopped tearing down and went back to check on Martinez and saw two patrons verbally attacking him. I will never share what happened at this point, but these guys backed down and left the room. But they were just two people out of at least a hundred at the club. We made it out, and we made it home. I did not sleep much that night. Be careful what you pray for, homies, and always remember. And this is here he quotes Psalm 23, 4. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff. They comfort me. Interesting, interesting little nuggets like that throughout Martin's book that are are very fascinating. It kind of really reminds you of how so many of the Christian rock musicians and artists who were sincere about their ministry back in the day in particular, um, you know, were on the front lines at times. And uh, that's a good illustration of that. And, and not everything always went, you know, smoothly or or uh, as well as you might hope. So interesting, interesting nuggets like that throughout the book. Now, I should mention that this is not a comprehensive history of the band or its members. I mean, this is a you know, a short, thin book. Martin himself admits he doesn't remember certain details, uh, you know, about all the events or venues or people's names from that time. And, yeah, I can't blame him. I mean, this was, what, well over 35 years ago. He's drawn on memories from then. Um, but this is a nice overview chronicling of this band and the early Christian metal scene of the late 80s and early 90s in and around the L.A. area in particular. I will mention there are some anecdotes along the way that are very much, I guess you could say, locker room stories of boys in the band being, well, boys. You know, flatulence and confined spaces, jokes like that. Um, not my cup of tea, but at least Martin is honest about young boys in a band and growing up along the way. I guess it gives the book some youthful realism perhaps. Uh, other than that, there's really nothing salacious about the book. It's just Martin sharing his memories, you know, his personal memories of his time in the band. I know I've mentioned this already, but it is a very short book. You know, it's thin. It's only about 180 some odd pages. And while there are 54 chapters in the book, you know, within that many pages, they're obviously pretty short. And, and Martin writes in this very, you know, brief anecdotal style, Memories of specific events or people are divided by chapter, so they're really broken down. Uh, and they're told almost in this kind of, you know, like a brief scene in a movie type of aspect. Uh, and many chapters uh, only run a page or two. There's also quite a few uh, little black and white photos sprinkled throughout the book, which is kind of nice. But overall, I really like this tight, brief format, and I think it works particularly well with the style of Martin's author's voice, which is very down-to-earth, laid-back. You know, you feel like he's he's just talking to you personally. One of the best things, though, is Martin often ends chapters, as I read earlier, with a, a Bible verse at the end uh, that you can reflect on, you know, usually based on the topic or content of the chapter itself. Um, he also has at the back some uh, few little reflections chapters, which are basically just extended Bible verses that you can reflect on as well. You know, this is a story of the band with some biblical wisdom included throughout, rather than a book of biblical wisdom that happens to feature some stories of the band. So think of it that way. You know, it's not a devotional or anything like that, um, but there is biblical wisdom here, and it's integrated in with the, uh, with the story of the band. So that's kind of cool. Overall, this book is really just a fun, quick read. It's insightful into some of the history of the band, Vengeance Rising. And, uh, you know, I found the stories of the California Christian metal scene of the day to be particularly interesting as it captured a, a time and place in history that is now long gone. This book also kind of attempts to right the ship a bit, I guess you could say, in providing Martin's more spiritual take on the purpose and history of the band as a ministry tool and perhaps will help to offset some of the, you know, band's possible tarnished image that resulted from Martina's later activities with the band, you know, and, uh, and in renouncing his faith. But uh, overall, really good, good fun book to read. So what do you think? Have you had a chance yet to read This Is What Happened, The Story of Christian Metal and Vengeance Rising by Roger Dale Martin? If so... 
What did you think of the book? Are you a Vengeance Rising fan? Did you happen to catch any of their live performances back in the day? Leave your comments below about any of that. I would love to hear from you. Anyway, that's it from me. Go out and listen to some great Christian rock. Maybe some Vengeance Rising today. And if you haven't yet, be sure and check out Roger Dale Martin's new book. It's actually really fun. It's a good, quick, fun read worth your time. Either way, be sure and just have a great day. And above all else, remember, stay in God's Word. Blessings, y'all. See you next time. Thank you.